Hey, what's up, Alex here. The last video I did was my study room makeover. Because of that, I actually went around to various showrooms to test out a new chair for the new setup. So I'm thinking to myself, why not do a chair tier list to share with everyone what I like. Before I get started, it's important to note that this can be very subjective. What's comfortable to me might not be comfortable to you. Different spending budget and also how tall or how short are you. Overall, the size matters. What I'm trying to say is you can use this list as a baseline reference. Ultimately, go try it out yourself. Okay, so in this tier list, I have shortlisted 12 chairs. For info, I'm around 175cm and 75kg. Okay, let's start off with what I'm sitting on right now, the Herman Miller and Body. The most expensive chair in this list. There are two versions of this. What I bought is the Logitech Gaming one. I have used this chair for around 6 months already. I would say, at first, I'm kind of disappointed with it. There are a lot of squirky sounds everywhere when you like fidget around or switching to another sitting posture. Super distracting. The armrest is hard to adjust to the exact position you want. Overall, the chair is very comfortable. It's just a few of these small issues that don't make you feel good. But after some time, these things doesn't really bother me anymore and I start to enjoy sitting on this chair more and more, especially for my setup here where I need it for both work and console gaming. I love how the backrest is designed to fully stick to your back. I'm using the recline a lot when I'm gaming on my PS5 and it feels like I'm relaxing on a couch. Super comfortable and I game like this for many hours. And believe me because I'm already level 100 on Diablo 4. So no regrets getting this. If given a second chance, I'll still buy it. S tier for me. Since we are on Herman Miller, let's talk about the very popular Aeron. Many people love this chair. In my previous desktop videos, when people see that I'm using a secret lab chair, people keep saying, you must try the Aeron. This guy has no idea how good is Herman Aeron. It's the best. I don't need to try it because my workplace is literally full of Aerons. Let's just say that this chair is not for me. I find the whole chair very stiff, the frame is hard and kind of forces you to sit in a certain manner. In a way, it's good from the ergonomic point of view, but trying to sit in a different way like cross leg, one leg underneath, body to the side or anything else is just very uncomfortable. B tier for me. Another chair we have in the office is the Herman Miller Mira. Personally, I prefer this over the Aeron. This is a chair that is definitely not as popular as the Aeron and Embody. I feel it's a bit underrated, not to mention that it's also cheaper. Between the Mira and Aeron, Mira has a better armrest angle, the recline is more comfortable and easier to adjust. Backrest wise, you have the option to go without the fabric layer. Overall, a much more flexible chair that allows more movement for your body. In terms of the aesthetics, Mira has more interesting color options and I find that they look better inside a home. So with that, I'm putting this in front of the Aeron at A tier. The steel case lid is what I have picked for my study room. So far, we have been using this chair for about 3 months already. This is an easy S tier, and since it's also much cheaper than the Embody, I'm putting it at my very top. But note that it comes with different fabric choices. If it's not the cogen material, then this probably will not be in S tier. Although the chair is not the very best at each different components, like it doesn't have the best headrest, doesn't have the best armrest, not the most comfortable backrest, but overall, it's the best when everything is put together. Before switching to the lid for my study room and the embody for my gaming office, I'm using the Secret Lab Titan for the past 5 years. For such chairs that are labelled as gaming, of course, I'm not going to look at it from the ergonomic standpoint. Purely from the comfort level, the Secret Lab is probably the most comfortable among all similar types of leather gaming racing chairs in the market. I think the best thing about the Titan is you have a huge seat area and you can literally sit any way you want. And if you want extra comfort for your back or neck, you can easily put a cushion at the back for extra support. That's actually how I've been using the Titan. Actually, I'm not even attracted to the aesthetic of such chair. I find the Embody, Ventum or Fern looks way better. I think the Titan has served me well for the last 5 years, B tier. Sticking to the same category of gaming chairs, I also went to check out the Razer Isker at their showroom. As much as I like their mouse and other gaming devices, the Isker is a total letdown, especially when I see Asmund Go, a very popular streamer, sitting on it for such long hours. Easily one of the most uncomfortable chairs, going to D tier. There are many other brands in the market such as DX Razer, TT Razer, Apple, Royal. 
I am not really keen to try them out. Some of them might be better at C tier or similar to the ISCA. If you want to go with such leather gaming chair, I think the safest bet is still Secret Lab. Next is Ergotune Supreme V3. I'm sure many of the Singapore viewers will be interested in this one because their marketing spent quite a lot to get many influencers in Singapore to promote and talk about the chair. Most of the reviews are very positive, so I ordered one to try out since they have a 30 days return policy. So I sat on this chair for about 3 weeks and I would say it kind of met my expectations. Their armrest is what stands out to me. You can adjust it in any way you can imagine. There's one that turns them into a V-shape, very nice for reading a book or playing mobile games. Unfortunately, the mesh material, I don't find them comfortable. The backrest lumbar support is also not something I enjoy. I find it a little too aggressive for my liking. Personally, I prefer to sit on a one-piece backrest design instead of this two-piece design. I realized some people actually place a cushion on top of the lumbar support so that there will not be a gap at your back where it's not fully in contact with the backrest. Because of such design, the recline posture is also not comfortable for me. C tier. A very similar chair to the Ergotune Supreme is the Hinomi H1 Pro. Same color options, backrest and lumbar support is also the two-piece design, similar headrest, Armrest is different though, which Ergotune Supreme has a better armrest, but the H1 comes with a pull-out leg rest. This is something very interesting that none of the other chairs in my list has this. It is quite a common feature in China because people in office have a habit of taking afternoon naps. I find myself using this leg rest pretty often. Overall, I would say the H1 Pro totally exceeds my expectations. The build quality of it feels much better than the Ergotune Supreme. It's pretty obvious when you do the assembly yourself. It's also cheaper. Having said that, this is still a C tier for me, but ahead of the Ergotune Supreme. Both of these chairs have a 30 days return policy, so go ahead and try it out yourself. Since I went over to IKEA to get the stuff I need for the study room, I just take this chance to try out a couple of their chairs. The Marcus comes with a mesh backrest and fabric seat, retails at 229 SGD. You can only adjust the height and do recline, armrest and headrest cannot be adjusted. I'll put this at D tier, even considering the low price. Luckily, there is another chair at IKEA that I find surprisingly comfortable, the Milberget. Sorry, I'm not sure whether I got the pronunciation correct. This is a leather chair, retails at just 169 SGD. I think this is a fantastic budget option. I'm putting it at A tier. Note that I only sit on these chairs for about 5 minutes at the IKEA store. Same applies to the last couple of chairs in my list, so I'm not really sure how good are they if we were to sit for long hours. So it's more of just an initial impression. The Steelcase gesture is Steelcase's most expensive chair if I'm not wrong. Comes with a very nice design and it also has a very flexible backrest. Overall, it looks like it's trying to compete with the M-Body. Although the gesture has a far better armrest and also has an option to get a headrest, but it's not really that comfortable, especially for my other half when we test out this chair together at the showroom. It's obvious for us that the leap is more comfortable, but I must say the gesture is better looking. B tier. The last one might be a shocker as it received many high reviews on YouTube. The Hayward Fern, I'm putting it at a very low B or maybe even C because it's also quite expensive. They have a small showroom in the Singapore office, so I went to try it out. I come with high expectations because it's the one-piece backrest design that I prefer. Lots of color options for you to customize. It also seems that you can even choose from different materials. Maybe it's the combi that is displayed at the showroom or I didn't manage to get it adjusted properly. I just didn't like it. The very first moment when I sat on it, I'm just not impressed. Alright, so this is my tier list of ergonomic office and gaming chairs. What do you think? I think it's quite obvious that my preference is at fabric chairs followed by leather and lastly mesh. Although getting a good ergonomic chair is important and might be able to prevent any potential health issues from those long hours of sitting, I think it's still best not to sit for too long and stand up as much as possible. Take some time to walk around, exercise and stretch a bit. I think this is something that people tend to forget. If you're still a student watching this, just spend within your means. It's okay to progressively upgrade once you have the spending power. But if you're already a working adult and have the financial capability, why not spend it on a comfortable chair that's going to benefit you in the long run? Hope this video is useful for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.